Have you ever wanted to be a good person, so much so in fact that you ended up hurting everyone you care about, leaving a trail of disappointment and destruction in your wake, and doing it all for reasons only you care about? Congratulations! You're a Christian. A Christian named Daniel Carr. Daniel's Lot is a 2010 film about a man facing serious financial issues with a struggling family and has an easy way out by simply selling some old property his father left him. But he doesn't, because God is telling him not to do it. Which is interesting because some Christian movies say that God does talk to people, and some say he totally doesn't. Extremely important consistency, what's that? Doing what you think is right, that's the hook. Being wrong, that's the good hook. Daddy's just got oh, something in his eyes, sweetheart. I'm sure he is crying, Rachel. He's got that sappy Christian stuff from the TV again. Come on, Christina. You don't have to call it that. To see a grown man cry is sappy. I don't care what you're watching. I don't care if you're watching Toy Story 3. Daniel and his wife are caricatures of annoying religious people and the even more annoying agnostic people they somehow marry. I don't feel the need to go to a church and hoop and holler with a bunch of holy rollers. Listen, we made an agreement when we got this house that your income would go toward the mortgage payments. Yeah, keep throwing that in my face. I don't have time for this. I am not going to church. Any church. And the girls aren't going to church. You can go, if you must. We get it. You hate religion. Do you see anything you like, Mr. Jensen? Mr. Jensen? Please. We're gonna be working together? Start calling me Bob. Anything you want to take a look at? Mm-hmm. Just not in the book. I do see something I like. I mean, he was not sent for a good purpose. <laughs> oh, so you're the only one that gets clients from God? No, but that guy is not from God. Oh, brother. Hey, I have a crazy idea. What if he's just a guy looking to buy a house? Nah, he's from the devil. So after an entirely too long sequence of Shrilly and Daniel doing their I Love Lucy routine sans the comedy or the love, she, get this, eats out Daniel again, and not in the good way. It's never in the good way. What you ought to do is sell that stupid lot that your dad left you. You're the only heir. If you sold that, we could pretty much pay off this house with what you'd make. What are you waiting for? A sign from God? As a matter of fact, yes, I am. Right. God talks to Daniel Carr. God talks to everyone. The Bible says it. Well, I sure haven't heard from him. Any tips on selling real estate? Oh, Shrilly, there are very few tips in the Bible. Only commandments on pain of death and clearly antiquated requirements. I'm sorry. I had another fight with my blockhead husband. Oh, is this a race thing? Oh, no, she said blockhead. My bad. I told you what the problem is. My blockhead husband's the problem. Lay me down in a nice. For those of you wondering why his kids are pretty much totally white, I have no answer for that. Genetics are weird, there may not even be his kids, who cares? If Dwayne Johnson can get away with it, so can this guy. Danny boy, Mr. Meacham wants to see you, and FYI, he's not too happy. He had to extend the deadline to the quarterly report. What? That's my reaction too. Not only do I not think English was her first language, I don't think human was her first species. You better hop to it. Yeah. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Keep walking. I'ma check out that fine ass. Daniel gets reamed by his boss, very much the bad way. Let's play WWJDIHJDGAS. What would Jesus do if he just didn't give a sh? I appreciated all of them just a little bit more today, and you know why? It's because I'm getting a full day's work for a full day's pay. Dude, you pay me 11 bucks an hour. It's a miracle I get out of bed for that. Shrilly is showing off a house to that client guy from earlier when he proceeds to seduce her in, watch this, the least sexy way you have ever seen. Well, shall we? M what? This guy either has no game, or he has all the game. 
because Shirley screwed him over, another later rival loses Daniel's job. He returns to the property that he still has no intention to sell, and Shrilly sprints to get it on with Jensen again, like Usain Bolt in a dress. I have zero tolerance for foolishness. I do not approve of anybody, especially somebody that I care about, going around breaking God's commandments, especially when I know they can do better. Wait, are you firing me because I slept with a client or because I broke a commandment? Because one of those sounds like I have a lawsuit, so go ahead. Although I don't even know if that's her boss. She doesn't say anything that implies she has the authority to get this unprofessional. Girl, if you were one of my children by now, you'd be on my knee. Sassy black employees unite! My dad made me promise not to sell this lot until the time was right. Okay. So how smart is it to lose our house, lose everything, file for bankruptcy, and lose the lot too? You think the court isn't going to order that thing sold? And it won't be for the premium you could get now. And all these terrible things can be yours when the time is right. And skyrocketing to number one on Billboard's Hot 100 songs you'll never hear again, it's this garbage! All that's missing is an obligatory Beats by Dre plug. Oh look, there it is. It's okay for me, really. There was some pitchy problems in there, I just, I don't know. It was definitely a little bit on the pitchy side. Daniel thinks he's hearing a voice when the audience is hearing nothing but the wind, but while rebuilding the fence, he's helped by disappointed to see you here, Gary Berghoff from MASH. I'm Daniel Carr, by the way. And I'm Bill Mahoney. Uh, good to meet you, Bill. Uh, you're, um, you're hearing voices, are you? Well, yeah, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, we all hear God, son. We're all a little senile. Did you know that Emmy award-winning actor Gary Berghoff came out of retirement to act in Daniel's lot? To which I respond, barely. But Daniel keeps hearing the voice of God, so after he discovers Shrilly's cheating, he tells her his plan. I know you won't understand, but God spoke to me, and he more or less told me to build a cross on the lot to show people that Jesus is alive. Are you insane? Yes, very full-size cross with the words he lives at the top of it. Ah, yeah. I see. Well, that's very stupid. But as always in Christian movies, the villains are people just trying to do their jobs, live their lives, and of course make profit, but since those magically become bad things when you aren't Christian, they're portrayed as evil money-grubbing Jews. Great. We'll nail him. To his own cross. <laughs> Because of the new amendment to town law, any religious construct must be sponsored or backed by a recognized church. Fair. Before they changed this, Daniel's Cross was an expression of freedom of religion, had the zoning protections of a church, and could be located in any zoning section of the city. If you think that's insanely broad, congratulations, you're sane! But look, it's Pastor Berghoff there to vouch for him, and it's revealed the evil businessmen wanted to build taverns and nightclubs and other dastardly things good for local economy. Shrilly and Jensen have moved in together, their girls are nowhere to be seen, and the world has yet another giant cross in the middle of nowhere. Daniel even receives a lucrative job offer from a man with a long-term construction opportunity. Wow, this really seems like a blessing, doesn't it? This is how it's presented, it's just sad to realize that if Daniel then discovered this man was of another faith and or gay, he would almost certainly turn down the incredible offer and be praised for it by the film. But we don't want to expose any more potential flaws in Daniel's character, because they're all Christians, and only Christians would take note of a community man with work ethic. You know what it is, son. It's God showing off. Oh, you got that right. Mm, you got that right, Mom. Wait, that's his mother? I'm pretty sure the white dude in the photograph would have something to say about that. But hey, maybe he's adopted. Maybe. God has been talking to you all your life. You just haven't been listening. Well, I sure heard him today. Telling me to leave where I was at. And? To go back to Daniel. 
to go home. Be obedient. God rewards obedience. You just wait and see. Well, thanks, Claudia. And thanks for not judging. Uh, were you there when she was laying into you earlier? That sounded like judging to me. You can't give her credit for not judging when she's only not judging you for doing what she wants. But when a famous TV preacher arrives in unnecessary green screen land, he offers to build a megachurch on all the land. Something interesting happens. The board and myself will get together and discuss it and come up with a workable solution. It's time, son. Dad? Bishop. The time is right. So Shirley comes back to Daniel. She's still annoying and over emotional, but she's a Christian in a movie now, so that's normal. The credits even list God for story. That's cute, but I'm pretty sure someone who wants to be paid came up with this. So that was Daniel's lot. It was God stupid. I almost always end up relating to the irreligious character who calls everyone out on their bullcrap, but Daniel's lot is unique in that the irreligious people are actually terrible people for the most part. It's sad that no film has struck the balance yet between the Christians being unintentionally insane and the others being unrealistically evil. Even though he's genetically inexplicably good looking, Daniel is impossible to respect for the first hour. Maybe you can commiserate, but that's it. I'm Iros, and as always, have a good one. Dear Sonny, I hope this letter finds you well, and even more prosperous. I am doing well here wait, in Florida. Wait, wait. Who's Sonny? Oh, that's what his close friends and relatives call him. stop to his foolishness. I will stop him, Henry. By the time anyone figures out what has happened, he'll be begging us to buy his little piece of dirt. Great. We'll nail him to his own cross. <laughs> <laughs>